Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Greg Carinha, editor of Label Now Web Magazine, and you've logged on for a deep dive about your team achieving sustainability goals with our team, MacTac Plastic Solutions. This webinar is being sponsored by MacTac and produced by Label Now Web. When I first entered this industry nearly a decade ago, sustainability was an option. Many companies wanted to be sustainable as long as all other factors were equal. In the end, neither converters nor their customers wanted to pay a premium for greener labels. Fast forward to today, and sustainability is no longer a nice-to-have alternative. It's now a requirement, especially as many of the top brands across the globe are instituting lofty environmental targets. The onus is also on suppliers to deliver products that ensure a seamless transition. Labels must deliver on quality and sustainability. MacTac has made an environmental commitment both in its product development and its internal operations. New products have been optimized to deliver increased recyclability, more labels per roll, and a host of other attributes. Plus, the company is on a CO2 reduction miss mission across all of its sites with a goal of achieving a 30% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2030. Of course, it's easy for a company to say that it's sustainable. MacTech has taken numerous initiatives to guarantee sustainability, most recently with recognition from the Association of Plastic Recyclers. APR is a U.S.-based international nonprofit and the only North American organization focused exclusively on improving recycling for plastics. APR's tools and resources help companies design packaging that can be recycled, support innovations that overcome existing recycling challenges, and encourage stable and reliable markets for post-consumer recycled content. The goal is for plastic recyclers to be able to successfully turn plastic waste into a new resource. MacTac has earned APR recognition for its polypropylene pressure-sensitive label materials with a hot melt adhesive for high-density polyethylene containers. During critical guidance testing, MacTac labels demonstrated compatibility with standard HDPE container recycling practices and remained in place without impacting the physical properties of the recycled HDPE pellets. With this accolade, MacTac becomes the first label manufacturer to receive CGR for a hot melt adhesive. In order to learn more about sustainability and the solutions currently available in the market, we have two experts joining us from MacTac. Kim Hensley is the Senior Marketing Manager for MacTac Performance Adhesives Group, and she has been serving the pressure-sensitive adhesive industry at MacTac for 26 years. With extensive knowledge and experience in market and product development, Hensley's expertise lies within the areas of prime paper and film, flexographic, and digital technologies. As part of her success, Hensley places great emphasis on industry, market and customer research, while serving as a partner with MacTac sales team, research and development team, and their customers, as well as other industry experts and stakeholders. Our second speaker is Christina Barajas, Sustainability Manager for MacTac and Spinnaker. Barajas has been providing company-wide sustainability support since she joined the organization in 2021. Since joining the company, her focus has been on developing, implementing, and monitoring company-wide environmental strategies. Brahas' expertise lies within the areas of CO2 reduction in facility operations, waste minimization, and deploying key marketing initiatives to promote simply sustainable products. As the sustainability manager, Barajas is responsible for CO2 reduction to 2030 corporate goals, landfill free reduction, supporting product management, and research and development on value added sustainable product strategy and messaging. But before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping announcements. For those of our listeners who are interested in the information that you hear today, this webinar will be archived on the Label and Our Web website. That'll be www.labelandnarrowweb.com. And it will also be available on demand via the link you clicked on to access the webinar today. We will be accepting questions throughout the presentation. 
You can type your question into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We will then collect all the questions and hold on to them until the end of the presentation. But please go ahead and type in questions as you think of them. If we don't get to answer all the questions during this session, they will be forwarded to our speakers who will get back to you directly after the webinar. Finally, if you are having any technical difficulties, like you can't hear the audio, please type your issue into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we will address it immediately. With that being said, I'd like to hand it off to our two experts so we can learn more about sustainability in our industry today. Thanks, Greg. Good afternoon. I'm going to start us off on a few key points about MACTAC, and then Christina is going to go into more detail on what we're doing to meet environmental needs. MACTAC is growing. Our integrated North America manufacturing and distribution footprint is 50% larger than it was just a few years ago. We grew and expanded with four industry advancing acquisitions. In 2021, we acquired Duramark Products, formerly Retrama USA, making MACTAC one of the largest most diversified pressure sensitive adhesive suppliers in North America. In 2022, we acquired Spinnaker Coatings, creating a one of a kind, world class, specialty labeling company. Also in 2022, we purchased CSI SoCal, a custom slitting and distribution center for roll label printers located in Ontario, California, which provided MacTech a turnkey, high performing roll label slitting and distribution center with a talented operations team and newer world class slitting assets. Earlier this year, we acquired Label Supply, adding capacity, specialty service capability, and talented employees in a geography where we identified a need and opportunity for growth. We have more advanced technologies, tools, and resources, as well as new state-of-the-art assets to provide overall manufacturing consistency, efficiency, and capacity redundancy. We produce high volume of consistent, quality core products to ensure customers have what they need when they need it. We are committed to delivering the role label market and customers enhanced products and services, supply chain consistency, and added reliability. We're also industry focused. Through three years of global uncertainty and change, MacTech remained true to our core values and markets. We didn't get distracted with any of the shiny or new products and markets. Instead, we strengthened our foundation. We supported our North American customer base by expanding our onshore capability during a critical time of global supply chain constraints, as we turned our attention to grow initiatives in support of market needs. We partner with label converters and printers. We supply products for some of the biggest brands in the world. And today, we are bigger and better than we've ever been, but always focused on our core capabilities while respecting those of our customer base. We're also focused on specialty solutions. Building upon our legacy of paper on paper hot melt constructions, we now have a breadth of service and product portfolio offering through Spinnaker and Lintech that have grown our reach into truly specialty applications. Now more than ever, we have these technologies, tools, and resources to help you solve your problems and grow your business. Yet we remain true to our core values and commitment by going above and beyond personalized service and support. Supported by our parent company, Lintech, we aim to deliver unmatched technology, capability, service, and value to our customers, helping you solve your problems and grow your business. With MacTech, our team is your team. And last, uh, MacTech is Simply Sustainably focused. Simply Sustainable is more than a brand. It's our initiative to choose environmental best practices so they can be ingrained in everything we do. By integrating environmentally responsible practices, we can build a brighter future for our customers, communities, and coworkers. Christina? As Kim mentioned with our Simply Sustainable efforts, our environmental focus is with the guidance of our parent company, Lintech, where we aim for opportunities to evaluate and expand our sustainability program to further reduce our footprint, inspire our employees, and utilize what we do internally to assist our customers externally with their quest to meet their environmental needs of end users. Currently, we're on our CO2 reduction journey across all of our sites, with a goal of 30% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2030. But protecting the natural environment through CO2 reduction isn't the whole story. When we look at sustainability, we look at our, all of our environmental and social activities, such as sourcing material from environmentally responsible companies and pursuing technology that aids in the recycling process. 
In addition, we work with all of our manufacturing sites to determine the best options to reduce landfill waste and make on-site recycling easier for all associates. Our facilities focus on minimizing the amount and impact of our waste materials. From a social aspect, we do enjoy giving back to the community across all of our sites, including Adopt-A-Family, food drives, fundraising, and as you can see from my very excited photo to the right, uh, collecting flexible plastic. Uh, over 37,000 plastic bags will be collected and that material will be reprocessed and made into a recycled plastic bench that will be donated to the city of Stowe. In addition to our ESG efforts, we also maintain several partnerships. We continue to be a voice in the industry, driving sustainable change forward through board membership and team participation in organizations such as FSC, TLMI, C-Lab, and APR, which you will hear more about shortly. Through our partnerships, we work toward moving the label industry forward in a sustainable way. So why focus on sustainability? Environmentally friendly packaging has enormous potential to add value to products, shape a brand's image, and develop customer loyalty. Sustainability and environmental responsibility for brand owners contending for leading market positions are nowadays a necessity. Taking a bolder stance, big brands are rolling out mainstream initiatives that speak to growing concerns worldwide, from shifting packaging designs to adapting company mandates. Brands are no longer sitting by the wayside when it comes to showcasing their commitment to global issues. Large brands such as Target, Nestle, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and Smuckers are making commitments that by 2025, they would make their packaging fully recyclable. These brand owners and designers are seeking packaging that supports consumer recycling and are promising to boost recycled content within that packaging. That's where we come in with how our labels can encourage package recycling if the right label is used and APR approved. Thanks, Kim. So why do our listeners need to know who the APR is? APR, or the Association of Plastic Recyclers, is a U.S.-based international nonprofit and the only North American organization focused exclusively on improving recycling for plastics. Their member base covers the entire recycling process, from design to collection to recovery to remanufacturing, because recycling is a highly interconnected system, and the success of each stage relies on what comes before and after it in the cycle. So now that we know who the APR is, why do we focus on the APR? We recognize packing innovations designed to be recycling compatible via the APR meets preferred guidance or MPG and critical guidance recognition programs. Advocating for the growth and sustainability of plastics recycling through federal and state policies through four different pillars, looking at increasing our supply, enhancing the quality of the plastics that go through the recycling process, expanding the demand and communicating the value of these plastics. MedTech currently has multiple adhesives APR recognized, and you may already be using a few of them. Watch as we dive deeper into two well-known adhesives and their specific recycling capabilities. In the video we just viewed, there were two main plastics highlighted. The first, PET, presents a problem which is that labels need to float off the PET containers during the washing process for recycling, leaving no adhesive residue behind, so that that PET plastic can be processed into high quality RPET for reuse. These PET plastics are often common items you see and utilize daily, such as food storage clamshells and water bottles. And now, Kim will cover the MACTAC label stock solution. 
MACTEC Pure Float was our first adhesive to be approved by the Association of Plastic Recyclers. As seen in the video, during the PET washing process, Pure Float labels easily separate from the container and float to the surface, allowing high value, clean PET flakes to be recovered. So where should you use Pure Float labels? Pure Float performs great in a variety of applications, such as water and juice bottles, health and beauty products, household items, and other food and beverage applications. Pure Float works well at freezer temperatures and cold frosty surfaces such as frozen PET bottles with condensation and frost on the surface with no edge lifting and excellent adhesion, leaving no adhesive residue behind. Today we offer this on a 2.6 mil white pearlescent polypropylene and on a 2 mil clear polypropylene with paper liner. But we're in the process of adding more options like our Bloom High Impact 1.6 mil glassine liner. Seeing the industry is moving to thinner products to improve economics and sustainability. Stay tuned to see more product offerings end of this year and into 2024. So in the second segment of the video, the other main plastic highlighted was pigmented HDPE. Now HDPE presents a problem, which is that the label needs to remain in place during the recycling without impacting the physical properties of the recycled HDPE pellets for pigmented applications so that the HDPE plastic can be processed into our HDPE for reuse. These HDPE plastics are a more durable commodity item that you may have in your home right now, such as laundry detergent, shampoo, household cleaners, and for the gym goers, protein powder. Back to you, Kim, with the MACTAC label stock solution. For HDPE plastic labeling, MACTAC has both a hot melt adhesive and an acrylic emulsion adhesive recognized for HDPE containers. And we're happy to be the first one in the industry to get Chill AT, a hot melt adhesive approved for HDPE recycling applications. At MagTech, we formulate our own hot melt rubber adhesives at our Scranton, Pennsylvania and Spartanburg, South Carolina facilities, which gives us an advantage on price, performance, and security of supply. If a consumer buys a product from the refrigerated section of a grocery store and it's hot and humid outside, what happens? the label starts coming off before you even get the product home. And what's the reflection on the brand? The perception is of poor quality or bad product, which hurts the image of the brand. That's where Chill AT comes in. As an all temperature hot melt adhesive, Chill AT is designed for refrigerated and frozen food packaging, as well as a variety of other applications, including waxy corrugated boxes, household cleaners, and personal care. With a quick, strong bond, even to cold, wet surfaces and low energy substrates, Chill AT is ideal for HDPE surfaces such as juice, shampoo and conditioner bottles, cleaning solutions, detergents, and so many other containers. MacTech is known for our best in class adhesives, and Chill AT is one of our best innovations yet. As a hot melt adhesive, it delivers exceptional performance, protecting brand packaging and offering an edge in a competitive marketplace that customers could only get from MacTech. And better yet, if a customer wants an emulsion acrylic adhesive, we have that too. Our ST95 is known in the industry for excellent mandrel hold and will give customers some open time if needed. We offer both of these adhesives on a white and clear polypropylene base with a variety of liner options. So now that we've shared with you our current solutions, let's talk future. Here at MacTech, we're always striving to innovate forward with new sustainable solutions that will help our end users get closer to their sustainability goals. Two innovations we're excited to share with you today are around PET plastics. You heard it earlier, but we are continuing our partnership with APR to provide new innovative solutions for a secondary PET offering. And then polypropylene. So as of 2021, polypropylene is recognized as a recyclable. It's the same process as HDPE plastics, so the labels do need to remain in place during recycling without impacting the physical properties of the recycled polypropylene pellets for pigmented applications. And if you're anything like me, you should be very familiar with polypropylene plastic applications as it's commonly used for takeout. Now, I personally do the other R in the Reduce, Reuse, Recycle Anthem and will reuse those containers for leftovers, but once they're past the point of reuse, I'm now happy to be able to rinse them out and place them in my recycling bin. Outside of our APR solutions, we have several other Simply Sustainable innovations that may be of interest to you, such as our Lintec Post-Consumer Waste Label Stock. So post-consumer waste is generated after a product has been used and disposed of by a consumer. 
we have nine constructions containing a percentage range from 25% up to 80% of PCW within the face stock. We also have our RCA or recycling compatible adhesives. MACTAC ST95 and 640AT adhesives when paired with a paper face stock pass the TLMI LRP2 lab testing protocol. So that means that these adhesives when applied to paper can be recycled and the paper is repulpable. And finally, our Bloom High Impact and Vivid Polyester Liners. These thinner liner products not only are recyclable, but can reduce overall environmental impact and provide up to 15 to 21% more labels per roll. As the MACTAC Sustainability Manager, I'm always happy to work with our internal team across all divisions to bring awareness to the wonderful Simply Sustainable solutions that we presented today. Labels and adhesives can significantly impact the quality of recycled plastics. At MACTAC, we are constantly refining our core products and creating new ones to reduce waste and promote recyclability for the entire supply chain. Our team strives for new innovations to meet your team's sustainability goals. Visit our website to see the full offering of Simply Sustainable products. Thank you both uh, very much for that insight. It was great to learn more about the initiatives that MACTAC is taking here. Now I'd like to go through some of the questions that have been coming in during your presentation. We have a bunch of topics here to address. I also want to give a reminder to our audience to keep sending in the questions as you think of them. So Kim, to start out, uh, does MACTAC offer face and liner material with recycled content? And if so, could you tell us more about those products? Sure, Greg. Um, yes, MACTAC does offer material with recycled content. Um, Post-consumer waste is generated after a product has been used or disposed of by a customer. So our products range from 25% to 80% recycled content. And these products can be found on MACTAC.com under Roll Label Sustainability. Um, we do not currently have any liners that have recycled content. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that. And Christina, to follow up, does MACTAC have a, a liner recycling program? And what should we know here? Thanks, Greg. So liner is now considered an approved recyclable. Um, through our continued partnership with TLMI, we're happy to share that there are available public maps for all matrix byproduct and PET and paper release liner recyclers. Um, new locations are being added frequently, uh, so we do encourage individuals to please visit tlmi.com forward slash sustainability for those recycling location maps to find a local recycler near them. Awesome, thanks. So Kim, if I have an HDPE container that I need to fill hot, what's the max temperature I can put on an HDPE label and maybe some other considerations for that? Sure, um, well typically hot fill applications um, require an all temperature or a very soft adhesive that tends to move best with a bottle because when you have a hot bottle and it cools down, labels can wrinkle. So you want that label to be able to move with that change from hot to cold. So we would recommend our Chill AT adhesive with white and clear polypropylene for testing. And this is our APR approved hot melt HDPE solution. And Chill AT has a minimum application temperature of negative 10 and a service range of negative 65 to 150 degrees. It provides excellent tack, ultimate adhesion to rigid HDPE containers. Okay, great. And Christina, is the separation of the label from the PET done at the landfill? So typically, well, in all cases, materials that end up in landfills don't get recycled. So we don't want to have our materials going into landfills, but we do want them handled at uh, recycling MRFs or material recovery facilities who can properly separate and process those recyclables. So after that material is sorted, either by hand or through near-infrared sortation, plastics are separated by polymer type. So that's why we talk about the important distinction between PET, HDPE, polypropylene, um, and then they're put into, into bins and baled by type, or they can then be ground down into flakes and go through a caustic bath. So that may happen at the material recovery facility. It may happen at an outside processor, but that is how the process works to get that good uh, recycled plastic material. Okay, thanks. And that question was actually kind of like a two-parter, so Christina, this is going to be a follow-up to that. 
When the label is separated from the PET in the bath, is the label then recyclable? So unfortunately, the label is often not the only material that's separated into the caustic bath. Um, it may contain other contaminants like non-recyclable paper labels, if there is residual liquid that's left in containers, contamination from you know outside outside plastics that get put in. Um, so after the caustic wash is completed, a lot of times that caustic wash does get reused a few times, um, but after a certain point, it's too gummed up or has too much material in it. And um, there's different ways that material recovery facilities will handle it. Um, sometimes they will put it through an incineration process um, or do a multi-layer filtration system to clean the caustic to be able to reuse it. Um, but unfortunately, there is no one system that truly separates the, our recyclable labels from, uh, from the recyclable bottles. Um, so what we really want to encourage people to do is to, you know, make sure that they're, that they're using a fully recyclable label because the more contaminants that are, that are in there, the less good, you know, potential RPET, our HDPE material that is out there. And if we had the right label on it and the, and the materials came in clean, uh, that, that label could potentially then actually go through recycling itself, which currently it does not. That's a really good reminder. And Christina, while I have you, how does a customer verify the APR approval? Oh, excellent question. Thank you, Greg. Um, we are happy to share our APR critical guidance recognition approval letters with our customers if they request. Um, but honestly, the easiest way to go about it is to go to the APR website. So it's plasticsrecycling.org. And under the APR design guide tab at the top of the screen, under resources, they want to click on the APR design recognition programs and recipients. Um, there they can read all about the program, but about halfway down the page is a heading of APR design for recyclability recognized components. And there they'll ab they're able to see all of the different aspects of whether it's a PET, HDPE, um, and, and see by innovation type uh, what type of um, the, the approval letters that we have available. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Christina, this one will also be for you. Your HDPE solution is for pigmented HDPE. What about natural and clear? So at this time, the APR HDPE design guide only has an available test for pigmented HDPE. But once a natural um, or clear HDPE test methodology is made available, we do plan on submitting a label to provide a solution for this application need. Okay, great. And, and another question I have here, uh, what is the difference between bio-based versus biodegradable versus compostable? Those are terms that we frequently hear. So I mean, what are some things that, that we should know about the, the characteristics of each different one? Sure, absolutely. So um, bio-based is, um, is a product that's made from raw materials like plants and other renewable agriculture. Um, you know, there is a USDA kind of approval that you can have for looking at your, your bio-based products. Something that's biodegradable um, can, is when a product breaks down into mostly harmless compounds, can be plant-based, animal-based, natural mineral-based. Um, and then compostable is uh, when the product is able to break down into the natural elements in a compost environment, whether it needs to be tested for home composting or industrial composting. So one thing to keep in mind um, when it comes to compostability and biodegradability is oftentimes terms are interchanged, but they are not the same. Um, everything that is compostable is technically biodegradable, but not everything that's biodegradable is compostable. Great. That's a really helpful distinction. And Kim, I have a question here for you. Having the APR label is great, uh, but when it comes to inks, what inks can I use? Yes, um, similar to the guidance provided for verifying the MACTAC products are approved that Christina just talked about, you can utilize the APR design for recyclability recognized components table on the APR website, which is plasticsrecycling.org, to find a list of APR critical guidance approved inks um, to have a complete solution for your containers. 
APR does have a program that's called Preferred Design Recognition. It was formerly called Meeks Preferred Guidance, and it basically makes recognition, the whole recognition process of inks and materials easier for converters with very limited testing. If they already have an ink that meets critical guidance and they have a material that meets critical guidance, then they basically fill out the, the form online and it, the process generally takes two to six weeks. So it's, they're trying to make it as easy as they can for the converters, as long as the ink companies and manufacturers have critical guidance already on their products. Uh, so one partner I would like to highlight is that we worked with at Label Expo is Sun Chemical, who has recycled friendly washable inks that can be utilized in polyester solutions. They will not stain the recovered PET flake or process wash during the recycling process. Okay, excellent. And uh, Christina, a question just came in from one of our attendees. Uh, why does the label need to stay on uh, during the HP, HDPE bottle uh, recycling process? So earlier when I was speaking about the material recovery facilities and the caustic bath and, you know, the label separation and, and everything, you know, it really highlighted down to that label ends up being, you know, tied in with all the other contaminants and oftentimes gets disposed of or incinerated. Um, with having the HDPE solution where the label does stay uh, with the HDPE container, um, it doesn't cause any kind of contamination with it and doesn't end up, the label doesn't end up becoming a disposed contaminant. So it's a comfort to know that, hey, that label can stay on there, doesn't, doesn't interfere with the HDPE processing, but then also doesn't end up becoming a potential landfill waste. Okay, great. That's good to know. And Christine, also a question here for you. Uh, with recycling regulations varying throughout every location, what do consumers need to know about sustainability? We've talked a lot about uh, brands and converters and suppliers. What should the consumer know? Absolutely. I mean, as a consumer myself, I can tell you sometimes it feels like your head wants to spin looking from one municipality to another, uh, let alone state by state. So you can often feel disconnected because um, recycling standards, like I said, are oftentimes set by municipalities versus a state or even a federal level here in the U.S. So your best option, honestly, um, look and see if your state has an extended produce responsibility or EPR that's going into effect, um, such as, you know, California has one that is, that is, um, that is working through. Um, and then get educated on proposed regulations. You know, there's a lot of good information that's available out there uh, that can help folks uh, understand, hey, what are we going to be getting asked at as a consumer for how we're supposed to be disposing of our materials? Um, and then understand your local requirements. You know, get on your city's website, look and see what they have available. Um, you know, get involved in the community. Um, work on even setting up, you know, recycling in your own in your own community spaces. Perfect. That's really great advice. And when you're and Christina, this is also for you. When you're speaking to your customers, what are some of the biggest envir environmental hurdles that you're seeing in the feedback from them? So very similar to what ends up happening with uh, with the end use customer, you know, who's at the grocery store going like, wait, is this green or is this not? Um, the same thing definitely happens uh, on a larger scale. So, you know, touching back to the regulations, there's confusion. Is it recyclable? Is it not? How do I handle it? How does this trickle down to the end use customer so somebody doesn't feel greenwashed and end up in a TikTok video talking about that? Uh, you know, it's uh, working with our team on the right solution for your particular application um, helps to remove some of that mud from the water on, you know, what's the application it needs to go on to, how can it be, how can it be processed, and then, you know, hey, is it approved, not approved, we have those, those options available. Excellent. And Kim, for converters that you're talking to, what is the collaboration process like with MACTAC, and how should uh, customers get started maybe who are thinking of partnering with MACTAC? Okay, thanks, Greg. Yeah, it's uh, very similar to the, the end user and the consumers. They have a lot of questions. So you know, they're trying to understand for their customers what they need. So we have put a lot of work together in our Simply Sustainable product offering. So it has the APR recognized products, FSC products, center products, such as a Bloom high impact liner. So our website has a, a great 
resource for information, I would definitely have them contact their sales rep. We do have webinars that we've put together so that we can actually present in front of their teams and, and help their teams with, you know, all of the sustainable solutions out there. And, you know, Christina and I usually will put those together with the sales rep. Um, product literature that lists you know, that lists all of these recognitions so that they have everything on one page. So here's all the APR, here's all the FSC, you know, just so they have those. Um, I think that's probably the best way to get started. But I would start with your sales rep and see what they need. And if they'd like us to present to their team, we will. Okay, great. That's very helpful. And Kim, also for you, how has the shift from paper to films, which was really evident during the supply chain challenges, impacted demand for sustainability? And do you see that as more of an issue now that film usage is on the rise? I do. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, during the paper shortages and supply allocations last year, we had many, many customers. They couldn't get material. They couldn't get paper face, uh, especially on your prime paper faces. So they were forced to move to a film. Um, and with that, um, you know, you now have, you meet your sustainability goals because your film is recyclable. The graphic impact on a film is is brighter. It's more vibrant on a on a film. So a lot of those, you know, as those films got into the market and the brand managers seen them and they know that now it's recyclable and it, and, you know, they like the look and they like the durability of the film. Many of them have stayed with film um, because of the sustainability and you know it's thinner. It's a thinner material. It's sustainable. Um, paper can be detrimental to the recycling process. So we've seen a huge, it, it's really helped film, prime films in general. Great, that's terrific. And Christina, a question that just came in from one of our attendees. Why can't the unpigmented HTPE be recycled in the same stream as the pigmented HTPE? Thank you for the question. So um, with the unpigmented HDPE, it does have a higher value for recyclability than the pigmented HDPE through, um, through MRFs and their recycling channels. So when pigmented HDPE is processed, because it's such a variety of colors, I mean, walk down a laundry detergent aisle, it's a rainbow array. Um, often when it is processed, it is um, it's back, to, back to black and then needs to be Redyed, bleached, process as a whole. There's a lot of chemical in, involvement on on having that be where it can then be utilized again. That natural HDPE or unpigmented HDPE um, doesn't need to go through that. Uh, so it does have a higher value um, and does require less processing than the pigmented HDPE. Okay, great, perfect. And uh, this next question is actually a question that I have, and uh, I'll ask to both of you, but Christina, I'll, I'll start with you while I have you. How has sustainability as a trend really changed in both of your careers? So it's really prevalent more than ever. You know, I mean, I kind of, I kind of have joke saying that, you know, without sustainability, I wouldn't have a career, but here we are. Uh, so um, it's it's really you know it's first off as a consumer it's a comfort knowing that you know when when you see what we offer on a store shelf knowing that we are contributing to the circular economy of hey this can then be recycled and then you know be be brought back to life again but as an overall in an industry standpoint I mean there's focuses on a global scale. Um, I mean, I know right now the UN Global Plastics Agreement is in draft form, and uh, you know it is it's it's going to be a huge step on uniting like a waste made here is equivalent to how it needs to be processed elsewhere in the world, um, and and getting that level of circularity is going to be so imperative. So understanding that you know the work that we're doing is helping to shift the narrative of designing packaging with recyclability in mind. Great, and, and Kim, was there anything that uh, you wanted to add about the sustainability as a trend uh, through your career with MacTech? Sure, um, so I'm filmed one of my product segments, so it's brought me into more, you know, brought me into the sustainability world more and more over the last couple of years um, as customers and brand managers request sustainable solutions. 
acquiring our Spartanburg facility has also put a big emphasis on prime film as well as coating center faces and center liners. And really, I think a sustainable offering is necessary. If you want to grow and, and become relevant, you have to have a sustainable product offering. Of course, that's great. And Christina, MacTac has completed several acquisitions over recent years, which Kim mentioned earlier in the webinar and also just now. How do these moves better help uh, MacTac's ability to serve customers and deliver on their sustainability uh, demands? So with these varying acquisitions, you know, it's allowed us to kind of expand our profile and ensure that, you know, we're able to meet the different market segments that are necessary um, with providing ease of service uh, for the very types of simply sustainable products. You know, it's, it's turnaround time that, that you know, is, is more manageable. It's ensuring that, you know, with our thinner liner products coming out of, you know, varying, varying locations that you have less trucks on the road, more material per truck, um, all of that just kind of compounds on itself. Um, so having that serviceability in more locations uh, helps benefit the, the end user significantly. Terrific. And Kim, you mentioned this before, but maybe you could expand. In what markets are these hot melt adhesives from MacTac most applicable? Um, food packaging, health and beauty, home care, um, pretty much anything you see in a grocery store. Um, and the hot melts in particular go on, you know, that's their benefit is they go on and stay on. So especially on some of those food packaging that, that aren't real nice and smooth or they have condensation or a little bit of frost on them, the hot melts work perfect. Okay, perfect. And Christina, you, you talked a bunch before about APR. Uh, to further expand on that, what can you tell us about your experiences with the APR? Absolutely. So I just actually came back from the APR member meeting that was last week and had a great time. It was extremely educational. Um, and honestly, working with them is uh, is very easy. Um, they provide clear testing guidance. Uh, through their website, and that knowing that that testing guidance is based on, you know, those who have actually a voice in the industry, that it impacts. So we have capability with the um, with the the overall groups and the subgroups that they have uh, that we can um, work work with them on contribution um, and actually have these testing guidances put together. Um, is really beneficial. And then the turnaround time from when you have a test completed to actually meeting with them, going through, getting approval, um, being able to promote and, and discuss, as Kim highlighted, it's typically, you know, a two to six month process, but it's knowing that there is rigor behind that um, and that it's not just, you know, slapping a badge on something, that there is meaning behind um, what's coming through from the APR. Okay, perfect. That's good to know. And Kim, a question just came through from an attendee. Uh, are you seeing any interest with HDPE labels for HDPE containers? We are. We're seeing a huge interest. So we started with the PET containers um, offering, but now we um, also have the HDPE, and we're seeing a huge, a huge amount of interest for the HDPE label. So we have our, our chill hot melt solution, and we also have an acrylic solution if someone needs, needs the open time. Um, and HDP is very similar as we talked about in the presentation. It actually, the label gets ground up in the recycling process. So polypropylene is the next one we're working on, which is very close to HDPE because we're starting to get requests for polypropylene as well. And the same thing, that material will get ground up in the process. So we we're hoping to launch something very soon on polypropylene as well. Perfect. That's really helpful. And Christina, in the future, what else would you say is needed for a circular economy as we're looking ahead? Education, education, education. I mean, understanding what we have available in terms of extended producer responsibilities, uh, in terms of, you know, what kind of partnerships we have between TLMI and APR and what available services that they have, and then really taking that and, and working um, with the end user on keeping packaging design with recyclability in mind and ensuring compliance um, for, those, for those varying goals for 2020, 
looking at 2024, as well as, you know, some folks have end use goals of 2025 and beyond. Okay, great. And Kim, uh, do you have anything that, that you can add about what uh, maybe to expect in the future? Uh, any any predictions for us? It's just that you have to have it. I mean, like I said, it's become necess a necessity. So you have to, you know, kind of reach out, reach out to your MacTac rep. We can definitely help you um, with with any of our solutions, whether it's for plastic recycling or it's for paper, it's for thinner. You know, like I said, we have a lot of. We didn't really talk about. Some of our other offerings today on thinner films and thinner liners, but we have those as well. Um, but it's 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 here. You know, a couple of years ago, it really wasn't here. You kind of talked about sustainable solutions, and and everybody was looking at them, but they you know were expensive, and so no one really pushed it a couple of years ago. But now it's here, and everybody's looking for it every day. And I think you have to have a a good product offering in order to be a success today. Fantastic. That's valuable information, and we appreciate your feedback, uh, both of you. Uh, we're running up against the end of our time today, so I'd like to thank Kim Hensley and Christina Barajas for helping us delve into the world of sustainability. As brands become more ambitious about environmental goals, sustainability will continue to be top of mind for everyone in our industry. I'd also like to thank our attendees for participating in our Q&A session. If there are any questions that you think of or that we didn't uh, weren't able to get to, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get in touch with you directly through email. For those interested in reviewing the information that you heard here today, this session will be archived on the Label and Narrow Web website. That's www.labelandnarrowweb.com and it will also be available using the same link that you clicked on to access this webinar today. Thank you again for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.